Sick right after he turned one. Um. Kind of slowed him down a little bit, buddy. Yeah. So he's just slower <laughs> than most kids. I think eventually he'll catch up. You think Joe will read it? Yeah, I think Joe will read it eventually. Well, of course. He's just the way. Because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was supposed to be a boy, but he's a baby. He's a boy. <laughs> yep, he's a boy baby. That's just about right. <laughs> you know, there's lots of things Joel isn't good at, but there's some things he is good at. What is he good at? He's eating, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're good at making him laugh. You are good at making him laugh. Why, how do you make him laugh? I fall down. Yeah. It's really funny when you fall down. Yeah. He's good at doing this what he loves. <laughs> what does Joel love? Wawa <laughs> in cups, bathtubs, and the warm, wet tongues and the cool fur of Das. Give me the sweet, was a daily affection. And bye byes. And blown kisses. And more. Oh, always more. This full list of words. <laughs> so few.
What is pain without a word for it? What is hope without a word for it? Who is God? What is joy? Who am I to him? <laughs> Dada. <laughs> okay, Joel, ready? Caleb, that Joel's doing really well. Doing really well? Yeah. He's been very peaceful all afternoon. Okay, Joel. Ready? Give me a little kiss. Set. Yeah. Go. Give me a kiss. so they're taking care of him. And that's how he gets his food? His food goes through that too. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna to touch him? Yeah? Why don't you just pat his cheek, okay? Okay. Pat his cheek. Yes. See? It's jolly. Yeah. You want, you want to touch him, Kayla? No. Okay. You can just pat his head over here if you want. What, what do you think, Isaac? <laughs> he just, he's, he's in the hospital, so they're taking care of him. And that's how
hey babe, just got done at the doctor. Um, now they think that maybe he's throwing up all the time because he has acid reflux. So they gave me a medication and we can give it to Joel and they said we have to give it at least three full days, but that if he's still throwing up after that, that we can come back. And I mentioned the head tilt thing again, even though they keep saying it's not related, but you always have to mention that one weird outlying thing. So I told them how his head was tilted to the right, but they still say that that's probably not related at all. So I guess we'll just give this a try. And I don't know, I'll tell you more about it when you get home. Fear is cancer's preservative, cancer's embalming oil. And you, O oh accuser, are fear's oil salesman. You're a snake, a serpent, a dragon with snuffed out coal on his breath, molten, and talons broken from the struggle to free yourself of your own skin. Hey, do you want to rock? Okay, let's rock. There we go. Oh, sh 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 sh. Hey, babe, I was just thinking, do you ever think maybe Joel can hear better than he's supposed to be able to? Because I know, like, it's supposed to be moderate to severe hearing loss, but sometimes, like today, he hears music playing before I do. So I saw him dancing, and I had to look around to hear that a song was playing. And I just don't, like, if his hearing loss is that bad, I can't imagine. I don't know. I just wonder about it. Anyway, call me later. Bye.
Oh, hey, um, I just wanted to take a shower. Is that okay? Are you okay with Joel? Okay, thanks. eggs again a dozen eggs on the kitchen floor again so we have to get a new lock for the fridge do you oh it's so so hard to clean up eggs from the floor like they just spread around and they don't come clean no matter what you do so I was just so frustrated but you should have seen them together they were so proud of themselves Joel and Elijah just sitting there with their eggs Isaac said he thinks they want to be cookers all right talk to you soon Bye. We're on our way home from the hospital now. So if you wanted to preheat the oven starting in about 30 minutes, that would work and we could throw in that lasagna. Um, do you know how they celebrate off treatment day? Like when kids are done with their treatments? I, I guess maybe you don't cause you're not in the clinic as much as I am, but on someone's last day, they always bring them a cake and they sing happy off therapy day to you. Anyway, that happened today. I mean, it happens a lot, but today I cried. I just wanted that day so bad. 
you know? I just, like, we're not ever going to get that day. If he's better, we won't know that he's better. We don't get a day. Anyway, okay, call me if you can. Like, there's probably traffic, so I could talk on my way home. All right, bye. call doctor is just a resident. Is there a way we could talk to our doctor? Yes. Isn't it dangerous for him not to get it? I thought he needed that. I, I know you're just doing what the doctors say, but can I, can I just talk to the doctor that ordered it? favorite game. Do you want to see? Watch out, start it. <laughs> Would you like to be a big 
big lion comes. You know a scary lion? It's so loud. I can roar just like him. Yeah, hear me roar. Why? Don't be afraid. You might want to cover your ears. Tears is my flavor. This terrible routine, watching you, waiting for you to wake, hoping you will never remember these days of illness and treatment. 
one day, I'll bring you here, show you your tiny handprints on the wall, and you'll be annoyed that we all think of you as some big miracle. Cancer will be such a small part of all you could grow to be. You will tire of hearing about it. You won't want to see the cards and notes I saved, and I won't mind at all. I'll hold the memories of this hard day. You just leave it behind. thing in the morning, the horse checks his email. <laughs> the little cotton mail. <laughs> Farmer Bill dresses the ducks like superheroes. <laughs> Farmer Bill plays hide and seek with the cows. <laughs> Farmer Bill scratches the pig's chinny chin chin. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, it's not good.
And there it is. They get it now. Sometimes I wish we could just leave them waiting a few more minutes, because once they get this news, their life never goes back to how it was before. Those were their last normal minutes, and they didn't even know it. I'm glad he's so good at this. He takes the losses so personally. Joel's looking good. He's been making progress, his weight is up. It's just hard to believe that we only made it halfway through chemotherapy. It, it was rough at first, but I really started to think that he was gonna make it. Any recurrence means the chemotherapy has failed. This is a tragedy. I'll nod my head. With an ATR yeah, team, whenever I ask sciencey questions, I nod my head, it is fatal. digesting every Latin word, so hoping it will stick to my ribs, to become part of me. We've already thrown all that if I ask enough yet. questions, that maybe I can get my brains around this cancer, that we know it's to. and I can choke it to death. I love asking good questions. It impresses them. They'll be impressed with the way we handle all of this. Such good, thoughtful parents that ask such good questions. So there just aren't any treatment options that are curative. We're very good at end of life care. We're very good at managing the pain and masking symptoms at the end of life. How long are we talking about? Prediction time again. No matter what I say, they'll wish it was longer. But sometimes, longer is worse. A few weeks to maybe four months. How long are we talking about? A few weeks to maybe four months. Four months? What is that? February? So we have Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Joel's birthday, maybe Valentine's Day? And that's it? And, oh, we still haven't told anyone I'm pregnant. Too scared they'd think it was irresponsible. And now this? They'll think it's a replacement baby. I don't want a replacement. Radiation could probably kill the tumor we see now, which would prevent it from causing any symptoms. But it would not keep more tumors from developing. Because we know if it's spread here, it has spread other places too. So... The radiation would buy us some time. No, nothing will really buy us any time at this point. It just can make the time you have left more comfortable. So we'll schedule you to come back in Monday, and we'll have some options for you to consider. We're so sorry. In the movie, I'd be kicking things and throwing chairs through windows. Amy would be sobbing and back against the wall, so I should be yelling. Why am I not yelling? Thank you. That means a lot. You're welcome. And it's quite small at this point, but unfortunately the size is apparently important. Any recurrence means the chemotherapy is failed. This is a tragedy. With the HRT, as soon as you have a recurrence of any kind, it is fatal. It is only a matter of time before it's spread out to other locations. We have already thrown all the chemotherapy we have at it. We can't continue to keep the chemotherapy that we have no resistance. There just aren't any treatment options that are curative.
so many things stirring around in my spirit that I have to write to settle myself and find God's wisdom in the midst of chaos. I'm scared I won't be strong enough to face the things we might have to face in the coming weeks and months. But then I remember how much grace God gave us to walk out everything we've already faced. I've never felt completely overwhelmed and I've never felt alone. So no matter what comes next, and I truly cannot even begin to guess how this will go, I know we will be cared. I want to shout out, look what God is about to do. Watch how he delivers Joel. And at the same time, I want to roll up in a silent ball and wait it out with fear and trembling, so aware of all my doubt, but yet convinced that my doubt is insignificant compared to God's faithfulness. everything is because if the trial works really well then maybe we'll stay in California for a really long time. Like as long as it keeps helping Joel then we want to stay and do the best we can for him and stay there where he's getting help. But if the medicine starts to not work as soon as it's not helping him I promise we'll come back home. Uh, are we going to Disneyland? Yeah, of course. What do you think, Kayla? Are you okay with leaving for so long? I'm kind of excited, but I'm kind of not. I mean, I think it'll be fun, but I just don't like missing school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're the only eight-year-old to ever. <laughs> That's amazing. I hate to miss school, huh? Uh, but, like, why? Well, I just hate having all the homework that I have to do. Oh, uh, you, you hate catching up for missing school. Your teachers are going to send me homework, and we'll just try to do a little bit of it every day. So it won't be that bad, but they'll still be fun and stuff we can How many kids get to go and go on an adventure to California in the middle of the school year? I'd say that's pretty cool. And we're going to be staying in the middle of San Francisco, near Golden Gate Park, and there's a museum, and there's, uh, there's a botanic garden, and... There's the Golden Gate Bridge, and water, and a prison, and <laughs> I promise not to leave you in the prison. Alcatraz. Hopefully we can get out of that. Cool. Anyway, so we're going to have lots of fun, and we're going to spend lots of time as a family together, and lots of time with Joel, too. You know? Yeah. I'm kind of sad, Trick. You know fun. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Yay and sad. It's kind of all of those things. I remember the day I was diagnosed. I remember the hallucinations from the high fever of five-year-old's nightmares. I remember my mother silently weeping in the doctor's office. I remember friends and family gathered around my hospital bed in prayer. I remember the two-hour ambulance ride to St. Jude where they could better care for me. I remember the two and a half years of weekly chemo treatment the numerous lumbar punctures and bone marrow aspirates. I remember doctors Bell, Dahl, and Kalvinsky, nurses Jean, Judy, and Dale, Miss Chris in social work, Darlene and travel, all part of the team that cared for me. I am a walking memorial to their successes. I remember the other patients I'd see each time I went to the hospital for chemo. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant. I remember the years of summer camp for children with cancer, children like me. I remember their laughter and the midnight talks of fears and joys, normal kid stuff, some less so. I remember when some stopped coming. I knew what that meant, but I remember them. I am and other survivors are memorials to those who lost their fights.
we've been through so much already. This is a new degree of tragedy, but it's not so much different from the struggle we've already been living. We pressed into God. We pressed into faith. We fought until we found peace. We stood in peace when our flesh wanted to strive more. We stood in peace when it started to feel like laziness or foolishness or both. <laughs> we waited for God to direct us specifically in prayer because all the directions we had initiated had not panned out. We prayed for no nausea because that's what we felt in our spirits we were supposed to pray, even though we'd prayed it countless times before while Joel continued to vomit. We saw one small miracle and then another. We waited to pray specific things until we were given specific direction and we saw bigger miracles. And yet, if you asked either of us if we were doing enough, trying hard enough, we would say no. Oh, her expectation is so maddening sometimes. Do you know what she wrote on the eve of Joel's first surgery? The one back in January when we first found the tumor? I seriously feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I'm pleading for God to spare his life. And I'm tempted to despair because self-inspection leads me to conclude I shouldn't expect much of anything. <sighs> and yet my wife is expecting a surprise party from the Lord, replete with presents and supernatural miracles. Hop in bed, boys. Let's go. Boys, get in bed. Oh, can you at least tell us a story? Um, <sighs> sure. Okay. This is the story of a very brave knight named <laughs> Joel. Joel the baby knight? <laughs> yes, Joel the baby knight, but he's also Joel the very brave knight, and he was being chased by a dragon named Cancer. Because of his tumor? Mm -hmm. Where does the dragon live? Um, in a forest. Is the dragon big? Very big. Does the dragon breathe fire? Much fire, you guys. So, Joel has armor, like a sword and a shield and stuff? Ooh, or maybe a spear? Yeah, that sounds good. So, so brave Sir Joel with his sword and his shield and his awesome spear and his super jumping ability was being chased by a dragon named Cancer. What other superpowers does he have? Uh, he also has grace. That's not a superpower. <laughs> it's the best superpower. Do you guys know what grace means? Yeah, it's kind of like help. Yeah, it's kind of like help. You know, and he's not the only one who's ever tried to fight this dragon. Some very brave knights have fought this dragon and lost. And some are able to drive the dragon off. And then they can go home and they can quit fighting for a while. And the kingdom is safe. Joel's been fighting this dragon for a long time, huh? A long time. But Joel found a nice empty cave where he could rest. And it seems like the dragon couldn't find him. 
But just when he thought that the danger was past, the dragon found his hiding spot and came after him in the cave. Well, that dragon's going to kill Joel. Joel's going to lose. Why do you say that? Because Joel is just a baby. Babies can't kill dragons. You're right. The baby can't kill the dragon. But that's the best part of the story. God fights for Joel. So he fights that dragon cancer right with Joel. And we know that God can win even if Joel can't. That's grace. Tim from church, Mom. He died from cancer. Wasn't God fighting for him? Then we have grace? Of course, God fought for Tim, too. Tim fought so well. He was so brave and so strong. God let him rest. It may have seemed like the dragon won because Tim died. But we know that Tim's in heaven and that he's with God and that God is so proud of him. So maybe for Tim getting to be done fighting. I can't. You have to, you'll drown. We're already drowning. How can you sit there like that? Despair doesn't help anything. Neither does false hope. And I'm not despairing. How can you say false hope? You're drowning! Well, you're missing your oars! And you don't even know where you're going. And yet you're so sure you're going to get there. It's better than drowning. Well, enjoy floating on the surface like you always do. There's nothing deep about drowning. Just get in the boat. You have to let me feel this. Someone has to. That's not fair. I love him as much as you do. I just really believe we're going to be okay. Mm. 
I'm sure my expectation looks like denial. But seeing Joel dying does not make me any less certain that he will be healed. In some ways, I feel more certain. Not because the same doubts don't come to me, but because I know that they will not be entertained much longer. Because this chapter is almost finished. And we will have an ending one way or the other. So the doubts and fears that make me reaffirm that even if I'm wrong, this is where I stand, become less and less powerful. People's conciliatory words of comfort meant to reassure us and help us accept Joel's death don't sit well with me. They aren't offensive because I know the heart behind them is good, but they are weak words because it's so obvious to me that death is the given. I don't have to work to be ready for it or accept it. It is coming whether I would accept it or not. It has been coming slowly for so long. I don't have to work to understand that Joel is dying. It is obvious. Heaven is amazing. And so I'm not worried about death. It will come regardless of where I stand and wait. But now, death is circling close enough for redemption to finally feel closer. This is the part of the story where a daring rescue can thwart death's intentions just in time, perhaps when it looks like it's already too late. I want to watch for that. I don't need to focus my eyes on death, studying it in its slow progression. Its course is already clear. But there is a glory that is coming, and its journey to us is wild and quick and frightening. And I want to be watching for that glory. I want to stand trembling in awe before God and His power. Not sure that this thing that we've asked for is something we can quite manage, but trying anyway. Death is the given. But the life that is possible now for Joel, the miracle that could come now that death is so close, is something worth pursuing worth risking everything to see with my own eyes.
Huh. The sunset looks pretty from here. The orange glow cast on the wall. Better than the muted colors of this hospital. I wonder why they choose blues and greens. <laughs> they, the ones who choose the colors that heal. Green for life. Blue. Hmm. For comfort? Purple stripes to hide the stains. <laughs> huh. This chair is too small and sticks to my skin. I hate vinyl. Blue. Purple. <laughs> hmm. The ocean, maybe? No. Under the ocean. Silent. Warm. And salty. Like tears. He won't stop crying. I don't blame him. He feels miserable. I hate that we're here. I hate that he's sick. I just want him to feel better. I hate this room. I didn't used to. For a, for a moment it was an adventure. I was cast as the compassionate and caring father hold up with his fragile son in a small cleft in the rocks. The storm raging, waves ripping at the sharp black rocks below, and enveloped in my arms, he feels safe, and I am holding him firmly, trying not to slip. Because if you hold tight enough, nothing will take him. Right? funny? A bounce, a bounce, a bounce, bounce, bounce. <laughs> oh, he won't stop crying. it greedily. Big, deep gulps. Okay, Jolie, that's enough. Breathe, kiddo. And he does. And I wipe his face of snot and tears and juice. And then he vomits 
and I catch it. I always catch it. I know you're thirsty, buddy, but you'll throw it up. No, don't grab too hard. You'll squirt all the juice out. Here, let me have it. It's so late, Joel. Lay down. I can't hold you. I can't make you feel better. Okay, buddy, okay, I'll hold you. Oh, Joel Bug, he looks so miserable. No! Don't hit your head on the bars, Joel. Joel, Joel, I know you're mad. Please stop. Please St stop. I shake, I weep, I pray, I plead, I need peace. I am empty. You are. I don't know how much you are. You are there. I want you here. I want you to call my son. I not. And you've brought us this far. He's still here. Not dead. Not there. With you. God, I want him here with me. Please. sleeps. Thank you. There's a story in the Bible where Jesus and his disciples are on a boat. A furious storm hits the sea and everyone thinks they're going to die. Where do you think Jesus is? Rowing alongside them? No. He's asleep. In the back of the boat. So his disciples are freaking out and wake him up and they say, Don't you care if we drown? So Jesus gets up and he says to the storm, Quiet. Be still and the sea becomes completely calm. Then he asks his disciples why they are so scared and if they have any faith at all. Like he was frustrated with them. Because even though Jesus said, let's go to the other side of the lake, 
His disciples thought he was going to just let them die. Oh, we're in Nevada. We're in Nevada. We're in Nevada. We're in California. <laughs> so now that we're in California, how much longer to San Francisco? About three and a half hours, bud. Oh. <laughs> well. It's 10 a.m. now, so that means you guys can grab one more item from your road trip bags. And it's my turn to be the king. Oh, <laughs> oh Elijah, it's okay. You were a very good, noble, just, and true king. But now we have to do it as a cons. My first edict as king is we dance like egg monkeys for 30 minutes. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe like five minutes? Nope, like nope, babe. He said 30. We must do what he says. This is the worst. <laughs> Someone make Elijah the king. There's monkey tickles. There's monkey tickles. <laughs> My second edict as king is Elijah gets to be the king. Oh. Just kidding. <laughs> Good joke, King Isaac. Matter. Elijah, was that too loud for you? Oh, I'm sorry, kiddo. You were too loud, man. But more than that, if he does die, will Jesus even care? Will he weep for him as he did for Lazarus? Will he weep for me? I think greater than my fear of death is that of insignificance. Or rather, my default assumption is that my thoughts and passions and loves and the stuff of my being are insignificant. How could the creator of all that is and ever was love my son as he did Lazarus? And could my soul stranded on this blue raft awash in a sea of stars, ice, and dust matter enough to him to turn his hand in mercy? Jesus wept for Lazarus. Five minutes later, he raised Lazarus from the dead.
sorry. I should have known we'd both end up in the same place. We always do. It just scares me every time. I just really believe he'll be healed. I, I know you believe too, just when you act like that, I get all unsure. I don't know that. What do you mean? I just hope that. I don't know. life return to him. Rise up. My God, come save him. Have mercy on us because he is weak. Father, I pray that you bless the mic. I pray that you bless in your finances, bless in your home. Lord, rise up. My God, come save him. Oh, Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. I will not let you go unless you bless him. Oh, Lord, Lord my God, let this up. boy's life return Lord, to God, him. God, come save him. I will not oh, let you Lord, go. Thank you. 
Lord, rise up. My God, come save me. Lord, have mercy on us because he is weak. life return to him. He was not in the wind. He was not in the earthquake. He was not in the fire. He was here in a gentle whisper.
So here we are. And the air is emptier without his laugh, and yet our hearts are still full, though with a different drink. And this ride we've been on for so long is silent. And so also the Lord. And so we sit here in this new silence and long for the music to start again and for the disc to spin again, even if it means going round and round for many more years. For at least we would be moving and Joel would be laughing here on earth and not only in heaven. But in this space, since his silence is only because he is drawing his breath. And now we know love and longing, empty and full, all in one moment. And I am grateful that we loved him well. And that we miss him well. And I hope that in the Lord's next breath, he will whisper his love song to you, his beloved. And that you will know him differently and more deeply. But now, we grieve in silence, yet not without his presence. I bet you would like it too. Look at all of these pancakes. Did you ever see pancakes like this? The big as me. A big one is for me. A little one is for my dog. I always wanted a dog, and now I got one. I even got to name it. Banjo. Whoa, bubbles? Catch a bubble, she likes to buy them. I love bubbles. Look, I can catch one. I want my bubbles. I love the bubbles. Do you see a rainbow in a pebble? I'm here, Manju. Have another pancake. Manju loves syrup. Me too. Syrup is my favorite party. I can eat wherever I want. I never fall. <laughs> 